Al-Halim, the forbearing. There's a divine quality only a very special group of people demonstrate when someone does something they don't like. Forbearance is patient self-control, restraint and tolerance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named himself Al-Halim indicates to us that he delays punishing us. Imam Al-Ghazali said, Al-Halim is the one who witnesses you committing a sin, disobeying him, observing disobedience to him, yet anger doesn't incite him, nor does wrath seize him, nor do haste and recklessness move him to rush to take vengeance, even though he's utterly capable of doing that. Forbearance is something that is praiseworthy when it's paired with knowledge. Otherwise, if a person doesn't have knowledge and they're forbearant, that's just being naive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pairs knowledge with forbearance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ya'lamu ma fi qulubikum wa kana Allahu aliman hakima. And Allah knows what is in your hearts and Allah is ever knowing and forbearing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pairs knowledge with forbearance. He knows what's in our hearts and He is forbearant even while knowing. Forbearance is that you show restraint with those who are weaker than you. It's easy to show restraint to those who are stronger than you. That's why even those with anger issues show restraint in the face of a judge or a police officer or a boss at work. The value though and virtue is that a person shows that same restraint and more to their spouse, to their children, to their students, to their employees, i.e. the people that you have power over. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a powerful verse, He says, Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal ard antazula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds the heavens and the earth that they cease and they would cease if anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala held them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Haliman ghafura. Allah is forbearing and forgiving. Ibn al-Qayyim comments on this verse and he says, this verse indicates that the heavens and the earth, they would seek to cease to exist due to the sins that humanity commits. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to hold them in place due to his forgiveness and his forbearance. If anyone else was in control of the heavens and the earth, we would have been destroyed by now. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forbearance with his believers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in Bukhari, no one is more patient than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with harm that he hears. They ascribe children to him, and yet he gives them health and he gives them provision. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forbearance with the disobedient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ يُؤَخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكَ عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِهَا مِن دَابَّةِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to punish people for what they had earned, He would not leave a moving, living creature on the surface of the earth. Everything would be destroyed. But He gives them respite until an appointed time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all respite until an appointed time. That is from the forbearance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forbearance with those who don't do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands or encourages. So for example, on the topic of charity, and we're in the month of charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in تُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا يُضَاعِفْهُ لَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ شَكُورٌ حَلِيمٌ Allah says, if you loan Allah a goodly loan, He will multiply it for you and forgive you, and Allah is shakur and He is Halim. Allah is shakur, shukr means to increase. Allah will increase you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is halim, Allah is forbearing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises those who give him a goodly loan. He's inviting us to give him a goodly loan. And he says that if you do so, two things will happen. You da'ifu lakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it and he will forgive you your sins. That is an incredible offer from Allah. But then he ends the verse that's saying, he is shakurun halim. Shakur means the one who will increase. Allah will increase you. But then number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he's halim, he's forbearing. The offer is on the table. And we are still so hesitant to take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that offer. We're sitting there hesitating, should I donate this money or should I not donate this money? Should I give this money or should I not give this money? Whenever you make someone an incredible offer and they drag their feet, it's very easy to get frustrated. In fact, it's very easy to get angry. You know, I want you to imagine a kid who got a full ride scholarship to the best college in the entire world, the best program. It's a full ride scholarship. Everything is paid for. They're not going to have to want for anything. And his parents are super excited. They're overwhelmed. They're incredibly grateful that this child, their child has gotten this opportunity. And I want you to imagine that they're like, uh, I'm gonna think about it. I'm not really, I don't wanna go. What do you mean? It's the best program in the world. People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go. And you're saying, no, no, I want to stay. I want to go to the local university because my friends are going there. Could you imagine that child's parents, how they would respond to that child's hesitation at taking advantage of that offer? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highest example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us these offers of forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us this offer of multiplication. And we still hesitate with regards to the donation of money. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the verse saying that He is shakurun halim, that Allah will increase and Allah is forbearing. He is forbearing with our hesitancy 
and resistance to separating with our money when he is making us such an offer. Adorning ourselves with this attribute of hilm is a really important element of leadership. The saying goes, لَيْسَ الْجَاهِلْ بِسَيِّدٌ فِي قَوْمِهِ وَلَكِنْ سَيِّدُ الْقَوْمِ يَتَجَاهَلْ The ignorant person is not a leader amongst their people, but the leader has to feign ignorance. You have to overlook. You have to forget. That is praiseworthy. And that's what any leader must do. And one of the most successful leaders of the Muslim world was one of the most forbearant, and that was Amir al-Mu'mineen Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiallahu anhu. So Ibn Abi Dunya, he narrates that Abdullah ibn Zubair sent a very harsh letter to Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. May Allah be pleased with them both. And Mu'awiyah, he shows the letter to Yazid, his son. And he says, what do you think? And Yazid says, even if you, if you were equals, you shouldn't have accepted that language from him. And you're the Khalifa. You're not even his equal. And so that's even less reason for, you to, for him to speak to you that way. So Mu'awiyah says to him, so what do you think? And Yazid says, what I think is that you should send him 40,000 soldiers. That's what I think. And Mu'awiyah says to him, well, how many feedbacks would that need for the horses? And he says, around 40,000. Each one of them will cost a dirham. So Mu'awiyah says, okay. So scribe, come here. Write to Ibn Zubair that Amir al the commander of the faithful, has written for you 30,000 dirhams for your needs. Ibn Zubair would eventually write him back, they've reached me, O Amir al Mu'mineen, may Allah have mercy on you. Jazakallah khair. So Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, he calls his son Yazid and he says, look, we saved 10,000 feedbacks, Yazid. Yazid, of course, is suggesting what many people would, would default to, which is to wage war and spend enormous budgets because of ego and anger. It's very likely that the, the cost of sending those soldiers would have ballooned had clashes actually happened with Abdullah ibn Zubair. And even if they didn't, but Muawiyah instead is suffocating his ego and spending less than that to keep the peace. And that's a trait that makes somebody a leader. Muawiyah ibn Sufyan is like, okay, you think sending 40,000 soldiers is what gets the job done? I'll spend less than that. I'll give 30,000 dirhams or 30,000 dinars rather to Abdullah ibn Zubair as a gift. And that will solve the problem that you had wanted to solve with soldiers. But the reason why he was able to do that is because of the incredible forbearance of Ma'ali ibn Abi Sufyan. So how can forbearance be acquired? How does a person have hilm? Number one is by exercising it. The Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ That knowledge comes by learning it and forbearance comes by practicing it. It beautifies the one who adorns themselves with it. And finally, the last thing that I'll mention is that hilm is, a, is an attribute that beautifies a person. Imam al-Shafi'i, he famously said, He says, Fools speak to me with all vulgarity. So I hate to respond likewise in turn. The increase in their vulgarity, I increase in my patience. Like incense that becomes more fragrant when burned. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Halim overlook our faults, protect us from the harm of our sins, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Halim grant us a forbearance that He loves. Allahumma ameen.